Alright, how's it going YouTube? So I think the last video was a drift day and I had some issues. So this car doesn't have a stock fuel system, do have the radium in tank, surge tank, so it's a little bit more complicated than the stock system. But what's happening is my fuel pump uh, fuses keep popping and I'm not exactly sure why. I did do a parasitic draw test on this with a multimeter and I didn't see any shorts in the system. There might still be, I'm not an electrician. So what I'm gonna do, my friend Eli told me to replace my fuel pump because I guess when they go bad, they tend to draw more power and they have potential to blow fuses. So I'm gonna see if I can just replace the fuel pump. So the fuel pump that I, I picked up, this is the same fuel pump that I have, except this is the version that is not E85 compatible. I am not gonna be running E85 uh, or tuning this car for a little bit. So I figure why not get the cheaper version, which is about $20 cheaper. But yeah, we are going to get this M 340 liter per hour pump into the stock fuel location. So basically what ends up happening is the stock fuel pump fuse. This keeps tripping. This one right here, 15 amp fuel pump fuse, keeps tripping. I ended up popping two fuses at the last drift day, and that would be the third total fuse that's popped in this car. I didn't document it, but on my way back from Street Series round uh, four, this car died in a drive through. So, and that was the same thing happened with the fuel pump fuse. So, this is kind of a long standing issue, and uh, I want to do my best to fix this. I do think there is a loose wire in the top hat. So, way, way, way long ago when I installed the. Uh, radium surge tank and even just doing the 1024ths mod on the uh, top hat, 1024th rod, I think there's a loose connection on the top hat that might be breaking connection and causing it to trip the fuse. I don't really know for certain, but we got to dig into this. Vibes is like less than 35 days away now. I got to get this figured out. I really don't want to go to Vibes and have a bunch of problems with popping fuel pump fuses it could be worse right so right now we're just moving this seat as far forward as we can get it so we have easy access to the fuel pump get that fuel pump fuse out also want to disconnect the battery and then we can start getting this uh, top hat out so there are other videos i have on my channel about how to get this out and all that so if you guys want to check back on that uh, i've got other videos on my channel. You guys have seen me do this at least three or four times, so uh, just kind of speeding on through this one. So fuel hat assembly is out. This, I don't know what you guys are seeing. This right here, the freaking <laughs> the heat shrink for this connection is definitely fucked up. That's a potential short right there, so that's cool. And another thing that had me concerned was this loose connector here for the positive. Yeah, that loose connector right there. It's coming from the positive. I think I'm just gonna try and squeeze that. I'm going to do new shrink wrap as well. It's fuel level sender. That's good. Might clean that up too. All right, let's uh, let's try to address this. Address this wiring, and we also need to change the pump that's in there. And we're getting this positive connection on the fuel pump crimped down just a slight amount it was pretty damn loose so i wouldn't be surprised if that was one of our issues but getting that hooked up and it definitely made a huge difference 
That's much, much better. Make sure that ground is nice too. Oh, wow. Yeah, that helps. I think I might put another layer of shrink wrap on this ground as well. Maybe that's why my fuel level sender doesn't work too. <laughs> okay, just for future reference, the ground is the middle pin. The positive is the outside pin. There's a common ground in the middle as well, and then fuel level sender. The red is on the outside and the yellow is on the inside. Alright, so we got this off. We'll double check stuff like the sock that we'll want to look at before putting a new one in. This sock looks fine. So the sock is not the reason that this, not the reason that this died. So right now we're getting the old pump pulled out of the inner basket so we can get the new pump put in. This is definitely can be a pain in the butt uh, with the radium setup. You gotta push the pump in with that foam collar that kind of keeps it pretty secure. So when you do go to put the new pump in, you gotta keep that foam lubed up with some gas so that it slides in pretty easily otherwise you're gonna have a really hard time getting that pump in. This is overall definitely a little bit of a pain in the butt, very tedious to do and also getting this thing wired back up and set back up to be put in the car. One really cool thing that I've done to this top hat, it's kind of a common issue the top hats like to break so I have replaced the stock rod with a 1024 threaded rod and those are threaded up almost all the way up till there 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 hasn't been any issues over the, the basically two years that i've been running this like this there has been no issues with the 1024 rod and it also makes reassembly of the top hat very very easy you just kind of like thread these on a little bit like a quarter inch you thread them onto the rod and that's all you need to do and they haven't come loose nothing has ever gone wrong with this so there's that this is just a more maybe not a more elegant solution but a more <laughs> just a more user-friendly solution let's just go with user-friendly if you want elegance let's go with the cjm top hat <laughs> that would be that would be the the nicest top hat. That'll be good. Just need to wire everything back up. We are good to go put this back in the car. All the wiring is tight now. There isn't any more exposed connector on the positive terminal, which could have honestly been shorting on this. I don't know. Tighten down these. Might potentially also, with this out of the car, see if I can do some multimeter stuff to see if any of the wires are shorting on the way to the pump. Got the fuel pump in, uh, everything's good. Just gonna get the fuel pump fuse back in. There it is. Get that guy back in there. Oh, there you go. And that's back in. And then we can put our battery back on. All right, so got the battery hooked back up. New pump is in. Gonna have to start her up, but first we need to prime the pump because it's a brand new pump. To prime a pump, we gotta basically cycle it to on a couple times, and you'll hear it prime. Okay. It's, yeah, it's firing up. 
And now I just heard liquid go into the surge tank, so. Yeah, yeah, so probably about four primes and we're good. That was replacing the fuel pump. I'm really hoping that is what caused my fuel pump fuse to blow twice at the event and once last year. But I won't really know until I drive this thing around and put it through her paces. So I'm not very good with a multimeter, but I didn't really see any shorts when I first went through it. But again, I don't really know what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm YouTubing everything uh, when I do it, so it's kind of funny. I think we should be good. If there is anything that happens, I will update you guys. I'm over here at the shop right now. Just kind of doing a bolt check on the Z. I didn't think this was going to work this well. I picked up some coilover covers for like a motocross bike or whatever. My buddy Mike sent me this and uh, yeah, it lets me basically run a somewhat of a boot on this thing because they're super thin. So they actually like they they run perfectly fine. Like they don't even move. I love that. It's kind of very close to the wheel, but. So yeah, that kind of works like a boot. Pretty hyped on that. So I picked these up on Amazon and uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna try running them. I don't see why not. So as well as replacing the fuel pumps, we're gonna be doing a upgrade to this car that I really should have done a long time ago. We are gonna be replacing the thermostat in the Z, the coolant thermostat. I got my gasket. So this thermostat here, this is part number 21200-4W00. This is going to open up 10 degrees sooner than the stock thermostat I have in right now. So pretty excited to not, not have a stock thermostat in. So yeah, that's the new thermostat. This is pretty nice. I don't think you guys are familiar with this. Not everybody watches the videos, but with this car, I have kind of went backwards about the way I did my cooling setup. I ended up doing a CSF radiator and I'm still on the stock coolant thermostat. I'm seeing an improvement with the CSF radiator, but it's not nearly what I thought it would be. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that I haven't replaced my thermostat at all. The stock thermostat in this car opens up at 180 degrees. And then the fans, which I have not figured out how to tune, those come on at 210. If anybody knows how to tune fans on a 370 to like keep them on at all times, let me know because I would love to get that set up as well. But at least with this, the coolant thermostat will open at 170 degrees. And I think that is going to help out a lot with the cooling baseline setup with this car. Really, I think everybody should probably start off with a lower temp thermostat. And I mean, you guys will notice this is a Nissan factory part. It's not a, like a Mishimoto thermostat. I've heard horror stories about those going bad. So this car also drives to the events. So that's kind of why I want to keep a thermostat in the car to begin with. If you trailer your car to events, if it's just a track car, you could just gut the stock thermostat and and be a lot better off but we are going to be replacing this thermostat today pretty simple so let's get to it and right now we're just getting this expansion tank out of the car 
and also getting the driver's side intake out. Any space and all space will help you with this. Looking back, I'd probably also drop the fans out to make this easier. So I had to take the under tray off. Unfortunately, my under tray just snapped the tab, so I'm gonna need to get that welded. All right, so I've been letting it drain. Took this cap off. Now this cap, I can't see any coolant in this here, this coolant neck. So yeah, you can hear the flow changing as I squeeze the hose for the thermostat. Kind of waiting for that to stop and then I'll tighten it up. I just don't want to fully drain this. All right, there we go. All right, now let's work on getting this thermostat out. I'm not too sure if I'm gonna have clearance issues or not. So I'm gonna try and get to this most pain in the butt one first. Don't really remember this being, oh, I know why. There's an electrical connector in the way. Okay, I'm gonna disconnect the negative terminal on the battery real quick. Yeah, so there's a connector on this sensor here that we're gonna need to disconnect, it looks like. And then we should have good access to that thermostat bolt. Yeah, there's that. Pretty bulky connector right there. Get that up out of the way. Okay, as you guys can see, that was kind of a pain in the butt. There's not much space. All right, get the new gasket. When it goes on one way, you can't mess it up. What we're gonna need to do is have our bolts kind of lining this up, at least two of them, while we go and put this in. So instead of cutting this out, I decided to keep this in. This is a sped up portion of me trying to get this thermostat on. Doing this with the front clip on is definitely a pain in the ass. Getting the gasket to stay on, you actually have to use three bolts to line it up, get them in the holes, and then try your best to just get it threaded. Yeah, I got one of these threading, so that's good. Oh yeah, that one's in two. If you had, I mean, I have pretty long fingers and skinny hands, so. Oh. We did it. What a freaking pain. So, we are torquing down these thermostat bolts to 74 inch pounds. That uh, converts to foot pounds at 6.17 foot pounds. You do not crank these down. Okay, that's good. Got it. All right. And finally, we can go ahead and get this hose back on. Also, remembering to reconnect the VTC solenoid on the driver's side bank here. Getting that spring clamp put back over on that hose and we can finally be done installing this thermostat. And now we can go ahead and top this thing back up with coolant starting in the stock location. So we get that topped off, then once that's topped off, move on to this coolant swirl pot since I also do have one of those. Doesn't take as much fluid as the stock location, of course, but get that going. Get the air box put back in, and then we can go ahead and put the battery back on and start this thing up, finally. And now we're just bleeding the car. Just keep topping it off as it bubbles and the water level will kind of slowly go down. I'm doing this with the coolant swirl pot from GK Tech, so it does make bleeding a little bit quicker and easier and keeps the system blood as well. Alright, so 
so that was a pain in the butt to do that without taking anything else off like just taking the air filter off and the couple of electrical connectors i would say maybe take the fans out too those are pretty easy to take out we're gonna take this thing for a drive after it bleeds and heats up and stuff and uh we'll see if we notice anything different pulled off the highway being 172 is pretty cool and that's also brought my oil temps down as well so really not a bad mod really cool to see that kind of want to cover some stuff that i did to the car before this upcoming weekend at lock city so added a power steering sock right here good old microfiber towel wrapped around with some zip ties I also noticed that my battery terminal was loose on the negative. I just bought this new battery. So what I did is wedged a small piece of copper pipe right there in between so that the lamp could grab a hold better. I did this, this tray back on, just small stuff. I forgot I did also fix this under tray with the uh, alu weld, I think it's called, from Harbor Freight. You just heat the aluminum up and glob a bunch on. That should be fixed for a while. <laughs> I also reinforced this side. That tab's back on. Picked up this stuff, the alumi weld rods from Harbor Freight. So that actually allowed me to basically braze that back together. So. Just small little upgrades. It all adds up, makes things nicer overall. And really uh, looking forward to shaking this thing down at the next drift day that's coming up on the 15th. I think it's like the 10th today. So really hoping that the fuel pump fuse does not blow. And I'm hoping that the fuel pump was the issue. We will see, but Probably gonna be doing more chasing instead of leading because I don't want the fuel pump fuse to die in front of somebody I just don't wanna get crashed into. So I'm not sure if that's gonna be the end of the video, but I will catch you guys later. Have a nice night and day, wherever you are. Peace out.